Hello. I'm sitting in front of this large painting. I painted about five years ago. Um, I don't remember if it's almost six or if it's almost five. I will look it up and let you know in a minute when I'm editing this. It's probably the largest painting I've ever made, at least on a canvas, not counting murals. Um, and I don't own it anymore. It's at somebody else's house where it lives. Well, I guess paintings don't live, but where it resides or just hangs on the wall. And um, it's kind of fun to walk in and see it and, and revisit that time and, and all the things that were going on at that time. Uh, it's like seeing an old friend, particularly if you still like the painting, which I do like this one. It has a lot of meaning uh, for me. It was um, painted when I was about to come to Portland. So I guess that's about five years ago. Um, a lot has happened in five years. If you follow my YouTube channel or my Facebook posts, you know about much of it. Um, there's been some loss of loved ones, um, a cancer diagnosis, some brain surgery, a move to Portland, um, a studio, and I started a YouTube channel last, I believe, October. I love painting and I love making the YouTube videos. And I've had a lot of questions lately about should other people consider starting a YouTube channel, particularly if they're older or whatever older means, I don't know. Um, since I'm over 70 and I've started this YouTube channel as a person over 70, that's kind of where I'm getting those questions. Um, and they wanna know if they should do that too. And um, I could just say go for it and I could mean that in some way, but I think the more practical advice would be if you enjoy doing something and have a desire to share that doing, and maybe just about as importantly, if you like sitting in front of a computer or like editing, or have some knowledge of that process, or some maybe just some interest in learning that process, even if you don't already have the knowledge, then yeah, it's gonna be a fun adventure, but it's quite a learning curve. And when I started this, like last October, I had, you know, the, um, the, I had the experience with creating art I had some experience with Photoshop and, and iMovie and making videos, limited experience. And the experience I had was like, I don't know, several billion years old. So um, there was a lot to catch up with in terms of how it all works today. Um, I enjoyed that process. I enjoyed the learning process. And so I think that's what kept me going. Did I make perfect videos right away? No, I still haven't made a perfect video. Um, some of them get kind of silly and uh, very imperfect, but it doesn't matter because um, I'm still learning. Uh, I enjoy the process of learning, and that might be a uh, question for you to answer for yourself if you're considering making a YouTube channel, because it is a little time consuming, consuming, you gotta learn to talk and pronounce your words. <laughs> I don't. Um, so that's one thing. Aside from whatever it is you're doing in life that you want to share um, within a YouTube video, you also have to produce that YouTube video and, and share it with the world, and that's a little time consuming. I like doing both of those things, so, um, so that's not a problem for me. I also am retired without not too many other commitments, so I can spend a lot of time doing this and um, and enjoy the process. So answer that question for yourself. And um, if you just really want to have a YouTube channel but don't want to um, 
do the things that it requires, like spending a lot of time retaking things, uh, planning, uh, learning how to manipulate iMovie and Photoshop and stuff, then, or maybe you have a whole bunch of money, I don't, and you could hire somebody to do that. That would be another um, avenue. Okay, so that's number one, I think. Number two, get over yourself. Um, forget looking at your videos and, and being concerned about how you look, whether or not your hair's fixed up, whether or not your hair's fixed up, whether or not your hair works. Uh, that's a big one for me. Um, just get over it. I'm sitting in front of this painting in my pajamas my clown, clown, cloud pajamas. Um, and one of the things I love about Portland is that I could walk down the street in these pajamas, the whole thing, the tops and bottoms and no overcoat and no one would care. No one would even give me a second look. Portland has enough weirdness in it already without me being able to even come close to being able to add to it. So. I don't have to worry about how weird I appear. And to tell you the truth, I didn't expect this, but sometimes when I look at that person in my, see, I don't know how to, yeah, that person, that person right there in my videos, I, believe it or not, have kind of a newfound love for her or appreciation for how she managed to get over herself and do these videos anyway because the aging process is a little weird and it's even weirder to watch it um, and then your mannerisms and things you do like oh, I'm always poking in my ear um, <laughs> anyway um, okay that's number two get over yourself um, or you can do what some people do and which I've tried to do a little bit is you can do a video with just your hands, although mine usually have paint all over them and that can get kind of embarrassing too, and never show your face or never show who you are. You don't even have to talk. You don't have to like speak, which that's another thing besides looks. My voice sounds like somebody else to me. But anyway, um, you can just do videos and uh, add music to them and put titles on them on the clips instead of talking ever. So you can get um, away with not filming yourself. But the more I get into this, and um, especially lately because I've been doing this challenge where I'm doing 30 videos in 30 days and posting them on YouTube, and many of them, or most of them, don't have my voice in them and um, don't have my uh, photo in them, and they're just clips or movie. <laughs> There are YouTube videos of my painting process. And while I love doing that, it's missing something for me. And I realized that recently as I was doing more and more of those and trying to um, complete this challenge is that I miss connecting with you and talking to you and um, sharing some of my, uh, the rest of my life, not just my um, creative projects with you. So going forward at least after i get through this 30-day challenge i hope to find a little better balance where sometimes i'm talking to you and sometimes i'm just playing the music and um i don't know we'll see so that was what was that number one was uh just do it if you like doing it number two was get over yourself um i think i'm still on get over yourself yeah, okay, so let's, I don't have notes. People make notes when they make videos. Uh, I don't know how to do all that stuff. I do know how to do it. I just don't like it. I've tried it. I've made notes, I've made scripts. I've um, decided I was gonna do um, more um, cohesive videos and not just ramble and stuff. And I can make that decision in the morning and, and ditch it by I don't know, nine o'clock in the morning because I don't like doing that. So I don't have to do it. I can do whatever I want and you can too. And so, hmm, 
Number three, perfection. Uh, it's like looking at yourself or hearing yourself. Get over that too. Um, I have watched some perfectly executed videos. Um, who, who's that guy? Mr. Beast uh, has uh, a billion bucks and nine million people helping him now, but he didn't always. And his videos are uh, really well executed not of any particular subject that I'm interested, but I do sort of like to watch how well put together they are. And many of the um, acrylic pouring artists or, or painters that I've watched on uh, YouTube videos um, do a really good job of presenting whatever they're doing with a, a cohesive look and feel and, and you know what to expect from time to time. That's a problem I have. Maybe it's not a bad problem. I, I haven't made that decision yet because I'm kind of all over the map. I pour paint, I paint on canvas, I take walks, I um, make video shorts, I doodle, I make doodle bags for the homeless. You can't um, plan on watching my video and knowing what I'm going to do next. Maybe that's not a problem. Maybe you're as interested as I am, or some people have expressed that they are, in just watching a variety of creative uh, endeavors that I might try. I hope so, because that's what you're going to get on my channel. That was number three, I think. Okay, number four. Hmm. Number four, if you are starting a YouTube channel with the idea that you're going to get monetized and have a, uh, ooh, what's that word? Supplemental income. Don't do it for that reason. Or if you do, whatever. Um, I think that you need to have some other reasons for doing this because, or at least to carry you um, through to the point where you're going to get good enough at this and prolific enough and cohesive enough and, and uh, viewed enough that you might have a chance at getting monetized, which I wasn't even considering when I first started this um, because it seems so far away. Now, to be grand, to be honest, I was going to say something else, but the word escaped me, which happens when you're over 70. Um, anyway, to uh, be honest, I lately have started to see signs that it might just be possible for me to get monetized. That would be wonderful because then I could buy more art supplies and share my process with more people and my art with more people. I would love that. It's still not one of my main reasons for doing it. It's not even close um, because it's still so far away that um, I just don't want to head for that and then be disappointed. See, this is, I, I told you I don't care about my hair, but oftentimes when I'm videotaping and I keep the camera in front of me and I look up, I'm like shocked at the hair thing. It's pretty good hair day today though, so I don't care. Um, anyway, so that's number four. Don't, you can do this to be monetized, but do it for other reasons too. Do it because you enjoy it. Do it because you uh, love sharing. You want to inspire others. Whatever your reasons, um, find them. But um, I wouldn't, I would suggest that you don't count on that monetization um, promise um, as your number one reason for doing this, because you just might be disappointed or not. I don't know, but you have to have other reasons. I do. Four. That was, this is number five. While you're um, trying to get subscribers and getting the support of others, take the time to support other artists and other YouTubers um, yourself. Um, it means a lot, especially when you're first starting out. I remember, um, oh, I can't say her name right, Melissa. I will, I will um, 
do one of those things where I, a title, I will tell you who I'm talking about. Uh, one of my very, um, I think it was within my first five videos, uh, she wrote me a very nice message encouraging me and my channel and um, it meant a lot. Not that my friends' uh, encouragement and family's encouragement doesn't mean a lot because it does most certainly, but this was a person who um, lives in a far, far away state or another state um, who has another um, uh, subject matter in her videos and um, happened upon one of mine and took the time out of her life to stop and encourage me. And, um, and then speaking of friends and family and people you know, uh, Facebook friends or Instagram followers um, who start to follow you regularly, it's really nice to, to know that you're not like talking to yourself um, making these videos and that somebody's out there paying attention, um, enjoying, maybe finding your videos useful, taking the time, their valuable time to uh, tell you that and encourage you. And so, you know, my feeling is um, pay that forward take that and do it for others. Um, look for new YouTubers or people that are just starting out or people that are doing a really good job or maybe you just happen across a video that you really, really like or found really useful. Take the time, tell the people, don't let them, um, well, if they're really successful, they're probably not sitting there waiting for your comment to keep them going, but it does help. It really matters to have the support of others. So um, I would suggest number five, not number four, take the time to encourage others, um, just like you might be doing within your videos. Like in my case, I want to encourage others to have a creative voice and to make art and to share their art and uh, build a community around art. So I'm wanting to, uh, to foster that sharing experience in my videos but I'm also trying to foster it in the community of, of being a YouTuber and um, sharing uh, or encouraging others to do their YouTube videos. So